Hello everyone, welcome to MathWorld. This video is to discuss Cambridge International AS and A level mathematics paper 1, which is the pure mathematics one for May June 2020 and the code is 9709/13. So this is the variance 3 paper. Okay, so if you enjoy watching my video, please like and subscribe to the channel and also share it with your friends. Okay, and if you would like to show your support to this channel, please click the thanks button just below the video. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so for question number one, find the sets of values of m for which the line y equals to mx plus 1 and the curve with equation y equals to 3x squared plus 2x plus 4 intersects as two distinct points. So these two distinct points means that when you are solving these two simultaneous equations, you will get two roots. So when two roots means that the discriminant is basically greater than zero. Okay, so that's the idea to solve this question. So firstly, I will rewrite the equations. So that is the straight line be the first equation and the quadratic curve be the second equation. So to solve these two simultaneous equations, I can just say first equation equals to second equation, which means 3x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals to mx plus 1. Okay, then from here, I will just move all the terms on the right side to the left side. Then I will be getting 3x squared plus 2x minus mx, okay, because on the right side, it is positive mx. So move it to the left side. And then after that, plus 4, the plus 1 on the right side move to the left side becomes minus 1, then equals to 0. Then from here, just simplify the second and third term. Now, 2x minus mx, the common term is x, so I can factorize the x, then I will just write 2 minus m as the coefficient for the x. And then for the last two terms, 4 minus 1 is basically plus 3. Okay, and now you compare with the general form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. That means my a is 3. Okay, then my b is going to be 2 minus m. After that, my c is positive 3. Then now, because of two distinct points, so you should get two real roots from this equation. Okay, therefore, my b squared minus 4ac equals uh, greater than 0 to get two different roots for the quadratic equation. So now just replace all the terms. Okay, and now we are expected to get the m values. So I will just do expansion or I will just keep the first term. No need to do expansion. Then for the second term, 4 times 3 times 3. So that means that is 36. And then now I will apply the difference of squares. So a squared minus b squared is basically a minus b times a plus b. Okay, so now my a is 2 minus m, my b is uh, the 36. So here, I will change it into 2 minus m squared minus 6 squared, which is greater than 0. So then, using the formula, that will be 2 minus m minus 6 multiplied with 2 minus m plus 6 greater than 0. Okay, then for the first bracket, I will be getting 2 minus 6, which is minus 4, then minus m, that is my first factor, and then my second factor, 2 plus 6 is 8, greater than 0. Okay, now, for my final answer later on, I need to refer to this graph. So, for your information, when I do expansion, this minus m times minus m is positive m squared. Therefore, I will get a graph with a minimum point because of positive m squared. And then my horizontal axis is the m. So now, for the values here, since I have two factors, means that I will get two intersection points with the m axis. So I will let this be 0. All right. So when my negative 4 minus m equals to 0, that means my m is negative 4. And for the other one, h minus m equals to 0, which means that m is 8. Okay, so I will label these two values on my graph. Okay, which means the one on the left side is minus 8, minus 4, and then the one on the right side is positive 8. Then now, final answer refer to this inequality sign. 
since it is greater than zero means that you will accept the graph which is above the m axis which means it will be these two regions okay so my final answer will be m is greater than eight for the region towards the right side and the region towards the left side it will be m less than negative four so that is the solution of this question Okay, now for question number two, the equation of a curve is such that dy dx is this expression. It's given that the point 4, 7 lies on the curve. Find the equation of the curve. Now, for your information, if you are given y to get dy dx, we differentiate. Okay, and now you are given dy dx. To get back the y, this is the reverse process. That means that is integration. So now, my working is dy over dx equals to 3x to the power of half minus 3x to the power of negative half. So now my y is the integration of these two terms. Okay, so now for your information, to integrate x degree n, or kx degree n dx, whereby the k is a constant, Okay, then I will always factorize a constant and integrate x degree and dx. So for the integration, we always plus 1 degree to the x. So instead of n, now becomes n plus 1. Then over n plus 1 and then followed by plus c. And now this is valid when the n is not minus 1. Because when the n is minus 1, the denominator is 0. Anything over 0 is error. Alright, so now here, this is 3. So... The x power half, when you plus 1, it becomes 3 over 2. Then divide by 3 over 2 minus 3x negative half plus 1, that is half. Then divided by half. After that, plus c. Okay, so from here, I have to simplify first. So for your information, this is 1 over 3 over 2. 1 divided by 3 over 2. That is 1 times 2 over 3 if I move up. The 3 over 2. So that's why I'm getting 2 over 3 x to the power of 3 over 2. Then 3 divided by half is actually the same as 3 times half. That is 6 square root x. Then plus c. Okay, so from here, that is my curve equation. But then now to get the c, which is the unknown, we need to replace a point. So 4, 7 say, means x is 4, y is 7. That means you are getting 7 equals to 3 times 2 over 3, then 4 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 6 square root 4 plus c at the back. Okay, then from here, you will be getting 7 equals to, okay, now for the, uh, okay, for the first one, if I multiply, right, when I multiply here, this one you multiply. So this is going to be 2, okay, two, 3 and 2 over 3 cancel off becomes 2. 4 to the power of 3 over 2 is basically, okay, 4 and 4. 4 power 3 over 2 is basically 4 degree 1 times 4 degree half. So this is 4 times square root 4. That is 4 times 2, then you get 8. Okay, then minus 6 times 3, 18. Then square root 4 is 2. Then plus c. So from here, you will get 16 minus, this is 36. So therefore, your c at last, it will be 7 minus 16 plus 36. So you will be getting, okay, let me check. Okay, I think I made a mistake for in the beginning step here. This 3 is just for the 3x, I mean for the x degree half. So I should cl close the bracket over here. There's no, oh, there's no bracket there. Okay, so that means there's a mistake over here. So I will just write, okay, this becomes, so the 3 cancel off, 3 and 1 third cancel off. So my y is basically... 2x degree 3 over 2 minus 6 square root x plus c. Okay, so, sorry, I overlook it. 
So all this erase. Okay, then now I will get. Okay, so two. This is four divided by three over two, minus six square root four plus c. So this is going to be okay. This four to the power of three over two is eight. Eight times two, sixteen. Okay, minus this is four times two, twelve. Right. So here it will be four plus c equals to seven. Hence your c is three. So, the equation of the curve, just substitute this 3 into this result. So, that will be y equals to 2x to the power 3 over 2 minus 6 square root x minus, uh, tr plus 3, sorry, plus 3, because the c is positive, 3. So, that's the solution of this question. Okay, now for question number three, in each of parts A, B, and C, the graph shown with solid lines has equation y equals to fx. The graph shown with, with broken lines is a transformation of y equals to fx. States in terms of f, the equation of the graph shown with broken lines. Okay, so first of all, look at here, this point. This is 1, 2. Then the broken line, this curve, this point is minus 1, 2. So obviously, right, the x has been changed to minus. Same goes to this point. This is 2, 1. Here is minus 2, 1. Okay, the x has been changed to minus. And same goes to the last point. Right, this is 3, 3. Then the new point is minus 3, 3. So from here, I know that my x has been changed to negative. Therefore, this is f of negative x. Let's say this is y1. Okay, now, part B. State in terms of f, the equation of the graph shown by, with broken lines. So, it means that now I will consider the points. First point, 1, 2. Okay, so this is fx. This is the new graph or new equation. So, here, 1, 2 has been changed to 1, 4. Okay, then this point... 2, 1. It has been changed to 2, 2. Then lastly, 3, 3. Now becomes 3, 6. So from here, the x no change, but the y, right, here, <coughs> all this y basically times 2. Okay, so change there's no change in the x, but the y has been doubled. That means your graph, y1, is double of the original graph. Okay, for c, let's look at the graph. Okay, this is the original point. So it has been moved to here. So now, 1, 2, 3, 4, because the shape is the same, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4 means 4 to the left, and then move down, 1, 2, 3. Okay, same goes to the other point. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then move down, 1, 2, 3. Okay, same goes to the last point. So, here, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2, 3. Right here, minus 4, and this is minus 3. So, since the shape, there's, there's no change in terms of shape, therefore, this is translation. Oh, no, I would say it is translation of minus 4, minus 3. So, the graph, okay, y1 equals to f of x plus 4 because of the translation to the left side for 4 units. So, the x becomes x plus 4, and then it moves down by 3 units, therefore minus 3. So done for the part C. Okay, question number 4. Expand this in ascending powers of A up to and including the term in x in A cube. So now 1 plus A to the power 5. Our formula is, 
okay, a plus b, the path n, it will be a n plus n c1, a n minus 1, b degree 1, plus n c2, a degree n minus 2, b squared, plus until b degree n. So from here, I will get 1 degree 5 plus 5c1, 1, 1 degree 4, a degree 1. Plus, okay, now you need to get up to x, a cube. So 5c2, 1 degree 3, a degree 2. Then plus 5c3, 1 degree 2, a degree 3, plus dot, dot, dot. Because we don't need the full expansion. So now what you do is 1 plus, okay, 5c1 is 5. 1 to any degree is 1, right? Basically the 1 degree 4, 1 degree 3, all this, you can just ignore it. So I will get 5a. Then the next term, 5c2 is 10. So I'll get 10a squared. 5c3 is also 10. So this is the expansion. Now B, hence expand this. Alright, now when you compare, my A becomes X plus X squared. The, the rest remain. And now I need to get X cubed. Okay, simplifying your answer. So when I need to get X cubed, because the first term is X, right? So in order to get X cubed, I must in, uh, refer, the, refer to the expansion until A cubed. So here, I will just write 1 plus x plus x squared, everything degree 5. So according to the previous solution here, okay, 1 plus a degree 5. That is 1 plus 5a plus 10a squared plus 10a cubed. Okay, so when you compare, which means the a here equals to x plus x squared. So now I will just replace accordingly. Alright, so now to get x cubed, so for the first bracket, I need to expand. That means this is going to be 1 plus 5x plus 5x squared. Okay, so for the squared, right, for this whole term, you just use the binomial, the quadratic expansion. So that is a plus b squared equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Then I will be getting x squared plus 2x cubed plus x degree 4. Okay, so now for the third term, it will be 10. Now, when you do expansion, okay, so according to the binomial theorem, you see, if here is a, this is a degree n. Therefore, my first term is x, it will be x degree 3, and so on. Remember, we just need to get our expansion until x cubed, so the rest of the terms can be ignored. Okay, so then from here, you can just do the expansion. So, this is what I get. And now for this bracket, you just expand until the x cube. So the x4, no need to write. Okay, because our expansion is up to x, x cube. So it will be 10 x squared plus 20 x cube. Then followed by this expansion, which is another 10 x cube. And just write plus dot dot dot. Okay, so now I will simplify it. 1 plus, look at here. There's only one term with x. So just rewrite this 5x. And then for the term with x squared, this is 5x squared, 10x squared, right? So therefore, it is 15x squared. So here I will get plus 15x squared. And for the other two terms, total up will be 30x cubed. So that is my expansion. Right? So then now, move on to the next part. Next question, number 5. Now the diagram shows a code going around a pulley and a pin. The pulley is modeled as a circle with center O. Okay, this is a center O and radius 5, means that here is 5. The thickness of the coat and the size of the pin P, okay, pin P, can be neglected. The pin is situated 13 cm vertically below O. 
Here is 13. The points A and B are on the circumference of the circle such that AP and BP are tangents to the circle. So the meaning of tangents means that both are 90 degrees. Okay, these two are tangent. Now the code passes through the major arc AB of the circle and under the pin such that the code is taut. Okay, so now find the length of the code. That means you need to find what is the perimeter of all this. Right, this is what you need to find, the perimeter. So now, first of all, I need to find out what is my AP. My AP is same as my BP because they are sharing the same length, okay? Sharing, sharing the same side and both are 90 degrees to each other. Therefore, when you look at the triangle AOP, that is right angle triangle. Okay, so I will just draw it here. It is like, um, okay. So here is 90 degrees, right? AOP. So AOP. AO is the radius, 5. OP is 13. So it means that now I need to find out what is my AP. So when you turn it, here, turn it to this direction. Basically, this is my O, here is my A, this is P. So, AP is unknown. OP is 13, AO is 5, and here is 90 degrees. So, this is basically the Pythagoras theorem, right? So, I can say that my AP is basically square root of 13 square minus 5 squared. So, that is going to be 12. Okay, so now I found my AP. So when you found your AP is 12, that means BP is 12. Then now I need to find out what is my arc length for this major sector. So for your information, okay, let's say you are given a sector here. This is a sector. This is a theta and radius is R. So the arc length is theta R, which means now I need to find out what is this angle because my R is 5. So before you find out what is the major angle here, we need to find out what is this angle AOP. Okay, angle AOP, we can refer to this triangle. Right, I can let, I can just, um, okay, I will just write sine, no, cos, because when you refer to this triangle, the O is the adjacent side of the angle, AOP, and then the 13 is the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is basically cos. So I will write cos angle AOP equals to OA over OP. Okay, so OA is basically 5. So that means angle AOP is inverse cos 5 over 13. And now I round up because for your answer, not round up, I leave my answer in radians because for this calculation, the data must be in radians. So which means when you change your radians, the calculator in radians mode, radians mode, right? So you will be getting this answer as 1.17601 radians. So I give more decimal places here because this is the working, not yet final answer. Now, once you have found AOP, because we know that BOP is the same triangle as AOP, that means there will be same angle, right? So now I will say that my major angle AOB means that the question mark over here. Okay, it is 2 pi because one whole circle is 2 pi minus these two angles. Right? So I will write here major angle AOB. Right, AOB is 2 pi minus double of angle a O P. So that is 2 pi minus 2 times 1.17601. That means this is going to be 3.93117. So once I found the angle, that means I have found the theta here. Okay, I have found this angle. So I can find the arc length using theta r. So now my perimeter or my length equals to AP plus BP 
plus at length of major sector AOB. So AP is 12. BP also 12. At length is theta R. This is the theta. So here is radians. So 3.93117. The R is 5. Then here I will be getting 43.65585. And now I round up to three significant figures. So by looking at the fourth one, which is 5, so I have to round up. Okay, therefore, your final answer is going to be 43.7. That is the length of the code. Okay, now, next question, number 6. A point P is moving along a curve in such a way that the x-coordinate of the point P is increasing at a constant rate of 2 meters per minute. So, rate means d over dt. Right, increasing means positive. That means now here I will write x coordinate. So dx dt equals to two units per minute. Right, two units per minute. And then the equation of the curve is given. So now your y is 5x minus 1 to the power of half. A find the rate at which y coordinate is increasing. Y coordinate. That means this is dy dt, when x goes to 1. So to get dy dt, I need to apply chain rule, which means I need to find my dy dx first. So to differentiate this function, we have another formula, d over dx, fx to the power of n. This is what we call as power rule. So the formula is, bring down the n, rewrite the function, then the degree becomes n minus 1 of the function. And now differential fx becomes f prime x. So that means here, you will be getting half, then 5x minus 1. Degree half, you minus 1, it is negative half. After that, differentiate the bracket, that is 5. So here is basically 5 over 2. Now you see the negative half degree here. So the negative means you have to move it down becomes a denominator. So the remaining half is a square root. So which means I will be getting square root of 5x minus 1. So this is my dy dx. So it's mentioned when x equals to 1. So I, I will write when x equals to 1, my dy over dx is basically 5 over 2 square root, 5 times 1 minus 1. This is going to be 5 divided by 2 square root 4. So the square root 4 is 2. 2 times 2 you get 4. So I will get 5 over 4 for my dy dx. Okay, now, lastly, you need to find dy dt. So dy over dt, according to chain rule, we need the dy in the numerator. Therefore, use this dy over dx. Then to eliminate the dx, I need to times with dx, then divide by dt because I need dt in the denominator. So from here, right, you will be getting dy over dx is this value, 5 over 4. And then dx dt is given as 2. So therefore, the answer is 5 over 2, then units per minute. This is the rate of change. Okay, now part B. Find the value of x when the y is increasing at 5 over 8 units per minute. So from here, dy dt equals to 5 over 8. Okay, so now you use dy dx equals to, or I will write dy dt because you are given dy dt. So dy dt is dy over dx times dx over dt. So your dy dx just copy from this expression. 5 over 2 square root 5x minus 1. So here, it will be 5 over 2 square root 5x minus 1. Then dx dt is given in the question right here. 
2. So I will just times by 2. Then my dy dt will be replaced by 5 over 8. So now the 2 and half will be cancelled off. Okay. And then basically the 5 can be cancelled off. That means numerator left 1. And now I will just compare the denominator because the numerators will be 1. So 8 equals the square root of 5x minus 1. So to get the x, and the question says value of x means only 1x. So I need to square both sides. So I square both sides. Therefore, left hand side 64. Right hand side will be just 5x minus 1. Then I'll move the minus 1 to the left side. So 5x equals to 65. Hence my x is 65 divided by 5. That is going to be 13. So this is my x value. Okay, question number 7a. Show this identity. So obviously the left hand side is more complicated because it consists of two terms. So then I will start from left hand side. Now by looking at the answer, we need sine, sine and cos. Alright. So now I will make the same subject first, same same denominators first, right? So here I will just cross multiply. Right, cross multiply to make it to the same denominator. So one plus cos theta. Then later I will change the tangent theta to sine theta over cos theta. So here we I multiply, I get tangent theta multiplied with one minus cos theta. And then plus tangent theta multiplied with 1 plus cos theta. So now for the denominator, I have a squared minus b squared. That is a minus b times a plus b. So which means my a is 1, my b is cos theta. So just apply this formula directly. It will be 1 squared minus cos squared. Okay, so for the numerator, just do expansion, right? Then I will get tangent theta times 1 is tangent theta. Then minus cos theta tangent theta from the first term, first expansion. And then plus tangent theta times 1, that is tangent theta. Tangent theta times cos is plus tangent theta cos theta. So from here, the... Minus cos tangent theta and positive cos tangent theta will be cancelled off. So now you will be getting tangent theta plus tangent theta, which is 2 tangent theta over. Now look at the question here. There's no square right, for the denominator. So it means that I need to simplify it using another identity. Sine squared A plus cos squared A is 1. So now you are getting 1 square minus cos square means that 1 minus cos square. So this cos square move to the other side. I will get sine square A is 1 minus cos square A. Therefore, I will be getting sine square theta. Okay, and now I have tangent theta in the numerator. So the tangent theta, I change to uh, sine theta over cos theta. So now this over sine squared theta, I can just take it out first. So it becomes 1 over sine squared theta times 2 of sine theta over cos theta. Then from here, the sine theta can be cancelled off. Right? You still have the sine theta in the denominator, which means now I will be getting 2 over sine theta cos theta. So let's look at the question. Exactly the same form. Okay, which means I have shown the identity. Right? Now, pass B, hence, hence means use the previous answer, solve the equation. So this left hand side we have just proven and now just equate them to 
6 over tangent theta. And now you need to solve for this interval of theta. So left hand side, I will change to 2 over sine theta cos theta then. So I write 2 over sine theta cos theta equals to 6 over tangent theta. So the tangent theta, right, you can just move up first. At the same time, this one is 1, this is 3. Then I move up. Okay, I don't want to have any denominators. So 1 times tangent theta is tangent theta. That equals to 3 sine theta cos theta. So the tangent theta is basically sine theta over cos theta. Now, when you need to solve, please do not cancel off the sine theta. Otherwise, you will miss the angle. So what I need to do is I will just move the sine, the 3 sine theta cos theta to the left side and factorize the common term, which is the sine theta. And then I factorize sine theta. So I'll get 1 over cos theta minus 3 cos theta equals to 0. Now when the multiplication equals to 0 means that one of them must be 0. Meaning either sine theta equals to 0 or 1 over cos theta minus 3 cos theta equals to 0. Now look at this interval. So for the sine graph equals to 0, I will sketch a sine graph. You will be at 360 degrees. 180 degrees and also 0. Okay, this is my sine graph. Right, sine theta or sine x. So that means here, your theta will be 0, 180 degrees. But because of this interval, we cannot accept exactly 0 and 180 degrees. So given theta between Okay, that means no solution for sine theta equals to 0. So now we need to get the, the solution from the second expression. So from here, I will move this minus 3 cos theta to the other side. Then you will be getting 1 over cos theta equals to 3 cos theta. Okay, now to get the cos, to get the theta, this cos theta move to the other side and the 3 move down. Okay, so it becomes cos theta times cos theta is basically cos squared theta, which is 1 over 3. Then my cos theta is plus minus square root of 1 over 3. Now, when the cos theta is plus and minus value, it will be in first two quadrants due to the interval over here, 0 to 180 degrees. So then when you refer to the calculator, we, I need to find out what is the basic angle. Okay, because I need to label these two basic angles. So basic angle is inverse cos square root of 1 over 3. Then that is going to be 54.7 degrees. So I will get 54.7 degrees. So now my theta is going to be okay, two values. One is 54.7, another one is this. So the big, I mean the bigger angle is actually 180 minus 54.7 degrees because it is on the horizontal line. So I will get 54.7 degrees. Another one is 180 minus 54.7 degrees. So therefore, you will be getting 54.7 degrees and another one is 125.3 degrees. So that's my solution of this question. Now question number eight. The first term of a progression is sine squared theta, where theta is between zero and half pi. The second term of the progression is this value. Given that the progression is geometric, find the sum to infinity. Okay, so geometric progression. Okay, first term A is sine squared theta. Second term, T2 is sine squared theta cos squared theta. So for geometric progression, we need to find out the common ratio, R. Okay, common 
ratio. R, that is second term over first term. So this A is also my first term. Right? Then from here, when you divide, it will be same as sine squared theta, cos squared theta, divided by sine squared theta. So at last, my common ratio is cos squared theta. Then from here, right, we need to get sum to infinity. So sum to infinity formula is A over 1 minus R. So therefore, I will write sum to infinity. That is A over 1 minus R. Then this is going to be, my A is sine squared theta. Then 1 minus the R is cos squared theta. So for your information, the 1 minus cos squared theta can be simplified. Okay, so now we have an identity over here. Sine squared A plus cos squared A is 1. That means 1 minus cos squared theta is going to be sine squared theta. That is the identity. So I will replace the denominator by sine squared theta. So at last, this is 1. So my sum to infinity is basically 1 for this question. Right, so done for the first part. Now for question B, it is now given instead that the progression is arithmetic, it's not geometric. B, first part, find the common difference of the progression in terms of sine data. So now, arithmetic progression, my first term remains as sine squared data. My second term is sine squared data, cos squared data. Okay, let's double check. Okay, now, the common difference is basically the second term minus the first term. So, common difference, that is T2 minus T1. That means I will be getting sine squared data, cos squared data, minus sine squared data. Then now the common term is sine squared data, factorize out, then you will get cos squared data minus 1. And now, again, use the formula. Sine squared theta, sine squared A plus cos squared A is 1. So here I get cos squared theta minus 1. Means that this one I move here. So cos squared A minus 1. That means the sine squared A should be moved to the other side. That is minus sine squared A. So here I will be getting first term rewrite. Second term is minus sine squared theta. So when you multiply, that is basically minus sine degree 4 theta. So that is my common difference, which is in terms of sine theta. Okay, so second part, find the sum of the first 16 terms when theta is pi over 3. So use back this T1. So now, arithmetic progression, my A is T1, which is sine squared theta. So it will be sine, sine squared theta is basically same as sine theta squared. So sine pi over 3 squared. So we know that sine pi over 3 is basically square root 3 over 2. Then you square it, it becomes 3 over 4. And then the D we already found, that is minus sine degree 4 theta. So now my D is minus sine degree 4 theta, means that this is degree 4 of the sine pi over 3. So then I will get negative of sine pi over 3, square root 3 over 2, then now power 4. So this is going to be negative 9 over 16. Okay, now, sum of 16 terms, first 16 terms, as 16. I will formula for arithmetic progression, right? The sum of the first n terms, the formula is basically 
as n equals to n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 d. Okay, so this is going to be 16 over 2, 2a, a is 3 over 4, plus n minus 1 means 15, because of n is 16, d is negative, 6, negative 9 over 16. Then from here, you will be getting 16 over 2 is 8, 2 times 3 over 4 is basically 3 over 2, Okay, then the next term is going next term is going to be negative 1, 3, 5 over 16. Then at last you will get minus 1, 1, 1 over 2. So that is the sum of the first 16 terms of arithmetic progression. Okay, question number 9. Now you are given two functions, fx and gx fx is a quadratic function where the x is greater than c and c is a constant gx is 1 over x plus 1 where x is greater than minus 1 a express fx in this form okay now what to do is to get that form we need to complete the square all right so the condition for you to apply completing the square method is the coefficient for x squared must be 1 positive 1 here is already positive 1 so I will show you step by step working here. That means we just rewrite first two terms. After that, you plus squared minus bracket squared, then plus 3. So the term inside the bracket, it will be half of the coefficient of x, which means it's minus 4 over 2. Okay, and then next step is just to combine the first and third term and factorize the squared. So I will write bracket squared. So copy the x. Now for the third term, you look at here, this is minus 4 over 2. So when you simplify, that is minus 2. Therefore, I will write minus 2 here. Okay, and then put the square outside. Because when you do expansion, x minus 2 squared is basically x squared minus 4x plus 2 squared, exactly the same as the first three terms. So then minus, this is 2 squared, a uh, negative 2 squared, sorry, negative 2 squared, then plus 3. So now I will be getting x minus 2 squared. So this term, square of minus 2 is positive 4. So minus 4 plus 3, that is minus 1. Okay, then for the first part, A. Now it's given that f is 1, one function, 1 to 1 function, state the smallest possible value of c. Okay, now here, I will rewrite this. fx equals to x minus 2 square minus 1. Okay, then the x, x is greater than c. That's why you need to find the c now. Okay, but the question is at state, no working. Basically, the C is the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? So from here, I will get, from this form, I will get a minimum point because when you look at the coefficient for x squared, this is positive 1, therefore minimum point. So I will just write minimum point with coordinates. Okay, you let this be 0. So, when x minus 2 be 0, your x is 2. And then the y value is minus 1. And now it's mentioned this is 1 to 1 function, which means, okay, supposedly like this. This is 2 minus 1. This is your fx. This is your y equals to fx. But then to get 1 to 1 function means that you, when you draw a line, okay, when you draw a horizontal line, which is parallel to the axis, there's only one intersection point. That's why we have to take this interval. Okay, which means I will only take this onwards because it's greater than, All right? So this part I need to erase, okay? The other side I need to erase it so that it will be always one-to-one -one mapping, one-to-one -one function. So I didn't show the x, y axis here. So that means my smallest x or smallest c is 2 because your c is basically the x. So it means that as long as it is greater than 
2 for the x values, right, then you will always get one intersection point between the horizontal line, which is parallel to the x-axis, and the graph. So that is the meaning of one-to-one -one function. Okay, now, it's now given that the c is 5. Find an expression for f inverse and state the domain. So there are two parts. So now, when c equals to 5, right, so I will rewrite here, fx equals to x minus 2 squared minus 1, and then the x is greater than 5. So to get the f inverse, let y be fx. And then we need to get the, y as, uh, the x as the subject in order to get the f inverse function. So here, to get the x, the minus 1 will be moved to the other side, then you will be getting x minus 2 squared equals to y plus 1. Then now the squared will be moved to the other side, so x minus 2 is plus minus square root y plus 1. Okay, then now to get the x, by moving the minus 2 to the left side, it becomes 2. And then we cannot accept plus and minus. This sign will be decided later. So now, once you have found this, the x will be directly changed to f inverse and then the y will be changed to x. Okay, now how do you decide the sign here, plus or minus? Right, so when you look at the whole term here, this is basically the range of the f inverse. Right, so range of the f inverse equals to domain f. So this is your domain f. That means your range f inverse just change the x into f inverse because range is referring to f inverse, then it's greater than 5. So by referring to this result, right, it is greater than 5, which means, okay, so when you refer back to here, to this expression, to get at least 5, this is only 2. Okay, first term is only 2. Therefore, it must be a plus. Because the whole expression is giving you the range of the f inverse. So this is how I decide whether it's plus or minus. Okay, so done for the first part. Now state the domain for f inverse. So for your information, domain for f inverse is same as range for f. So what to do? Because just now we have proven that the minimum point is at 2 minus 1. Okay, but then when you look at the x value right now, your x value is greater than 5, which means let's say this is your graph, 2 minus 1, and now your x is greater than 5, which means here onwards, you are considering this. So this is x goes to 5, right? Then now you just, just need to substitute this x into your graph to find out what is the y value. Then I know that that is the minimum y. And I'm getting the range. Okay, so now I will just write f5, just substitute x by 5 over here. It will be 5 minus 2 squared minus 1. This is going to be 3 squared minus 1, that is 8. Okay, which means at this point, okay, the coordinates will be 5, 8. Right, and now when you look at the domain, domain just greater than 5, never include 5. Therefore, my range for the f inverse, okay, or here, I will write range f is never include 8. Therefore, my domain f inverse, just copy this result and change the f in, uh, fx into x because domain is referring to the x. So this is my final answer for the second part. Okay, D, find an expression for G inverse, GF and state the range for GF. So I will rewrite my fx. fx is x minus 2 squared minus 1. Okay, then my GX is... One over x plus one. The x is greater than minus one. One over x. One over 
x plus 1. And the x is greater than minus 1. Alright? So your fx is actually x greater than 2. So now to get the gfx, excuse me. So gfx is basically g of x minus 2 squared minus 1. That means now when you compare, this is gx, it has been changed to this whole term. This whole term. That means now I have to change accordingly. So then I will be getting 1 divided by the new x. This is my new x. Then I plus 1. Okay, so when you open the brackets, it's basically the minus 1 and plus 1 cancel off. Then I'm getting 1 over the squared. x minus 2 squared. So this is my gf. That is the composite function. Now, to get the range of gf, okay, I need to refer to this diagram. So gf means this is g f we will substitute the f into the g so this is f substitute into the g so now to get the range of gf i need to find out what is my domain gf so basically domain gf is same as domain f okay let me see the d here. what is my domain okay wait you see here now given c equals to five Okay, and then after mention this statement c equals to 5, you need to answer c and answer pass d. That means now my x is greater than 5 because in the original question is mentioned x is greater than c. Okay, and the x equals to 5 applies to c and d according to this question. Right, so now with this, I need to find out what is my range of g, f. So, since domain gf equals to domain f, that means domain gf, it is x greater than 5, because it's stated here, right? So now, to get the domain, okay, domain already found. Now, from the domain, get the range. So, substitute this into this result. Okay, so now. When I substitute 5 into the function, okay, when x equals to 5, even though it does not include 5, but when we calculate, we still need to replace by 5. So when x equals to 5, my gf is 1 over 5 minus 2 squared. That means this is 1 over 3 squared, that is 1 over 9. Okay, but because of greater than 5, Greater than 5 means that I can consider up to infinity. So when x approaches infinity, right, 1 over x minus 2 squared, the denominator is a very huge number. So 1 over huge number tends to 0. That means your gfx tends to 0. Okay, so which means your x increasing the whole value decreasing, All right? Decreasing until zero. And now, when I agree five, I get one over nine. That means range of gf, my gfx is between zero and one over nine. Okay, so that's the solution of this question. Now, question 10a. The coordinates of two points A and B. Okay, so A with coordinates minus three five three sorry minus seven three, and then the B with coordinates five eleven. Right. So then now the question is asking to show the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, just for information, let's say AB. Right. Perpendicular bisector means that. It is a line that passes through the midpoint of AB and is perpendicular to AB. That is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so from here, we need to find out what is the M, what is the gradient. So this gradient will be 
perpendicular to, I mean the line is perpendicular to AB. That means the M from the orange line times the M from the AB, right? Times the M of AB, it will be minus 1. That is the properties of perpendicular lines. So, means that now I need to find out the MAB. That is a gradient. So, for your information, if let's say you are given two points, X1, Y1, Okay, and another one is x2, y2. So the gradient is basically change in the y over change in the x. So then from here, okay, my gradient is basically 11 minus 3 over 5 minus minus 7. This is going to be 8 over 12. So 8 over 12 can be simplified into 2 over 3. So now, my another gradient, it will be negative of 1 over MAB. This is the properties of the perpendicular lines. Therefore, I'm getting negative 1 over 2 over 3. Okay, I, I write here, negative 1 over 2 over 3. That is going to be negative 3 over 2. So that is the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. And then because of the bisector means that it cuts into half for the AB. So it means that I need to find midpoints. The midpoint of AB, I'll let it be capital letter M. Midpoint is the average of the X plus the A and also the average of the Y. So that will be negative 7 plus 5 divided by 2. And then 3 plus 11 divided by 2. Then here is going to be negative 2 over 2. And then 14 over 2. Hence, I'm getting negative 1 and 7. So now, equation of the perpendicular bisector. A, B. Okay, so since this is a straight line, we are using the straight line formula, which is y minus y1 equals to m bracket x minus x1. So now your y1, okay, your y1 now refers to 7. Okay, use this point and this gradient to solve the problem. So that means now you will be getting y minus 7. The gradient is negative 3 over 2. Then x minus minus 1. Then from here, you can just use cross, I mean the expansion, this is negative 3 over 2x. Now, for your information, this is plus 1. The plus 1 and the minus, it will be minus 3 over 2. And there is a negative 7 on the left side. Move it to right side, becomes plus 7. Then from here, I will get y equals to negative 3 over 2x. Minus seven over two, minus three over two plus seven. That is going to be plus eleven over two. Okay, so it doesn't mention any specific form. Therefore, you can just leave your answer in this form. Okay, done for this part. Perpendicular bisector. Now, B. A circle passes through AB and its center lies on this line. Find the equation of the center. Okay, let's say for example, this is the circle. Okay, your AB are given minus 7, 3 and 5, 11. Let's say here A, A is minus 7, 3 and then this is a B, 5, and 11. Okay, let, let's check. And then we have found the perpendicular bisector. The middle point is minus 1, 7 here. So which means, okay, here, the middle point, this is the M. Then I know that it is going to be, okay, now, um, perpendicular bisector of A, B. Right, now what we need to do here is, you need to find out the equation of the circle. 
okay i need to find out what is the center so based on this midpoints of a b right minus one seven we are not sure whether the a b is diameter or not okay so probably i don't label the m i just get this result then now i know that a circle passes through a b okay circle and the center lies on this line the center of the circle lies on that line so which means okay which means when you look at here 12x see here 12x minus 5y equals to 70 where i need to get the y as a subject in order to get the gradient so i will get 5y equals to 12x minus 70 all right so from here i know that my gradient is positive all right so which means most likely this is your line 12x minus 5y equals to 70 and then just now we have found the perpendicular bisector which is this line this line have a negative has a negative gradient so it means that now i will label over here that is the perpendicular bisector this one is y equals to negative 3 over 2 x plus 11 over 2 so y equals to negative 3 over 2 x plus 11 over 2 okay now then from here i need to find out the center okay because we know that this orange line is actually the perpendicular bisector all right then now i will just solve the two equations i let this be first equation and then the second equation is y equals to negative 3 over 2x plus 11 over 2 so for the second equation i multiply by 2 okay so here second equation so second equation multiply by 2 to eliminate the, the, the denominator therefore i'm getting 2y equals to negative 3x plus 11 this is my third equation now when you need to solve these simultaneous equations means that you are solving one and third first and third and notice that 5y okay or probably if i don't want to just use this because later i need to times again probably i can just direct use back the second equation and then i substitute so that my answer will be in fraction later on okay no need to times so many times so i substitute second into first to get the intersection point so when intersection points that will be my midpoint oh no no that will be my center of the circle okay that is what i need to find so now when you substitute second into first equation the y will be replaced by negative 3 over 2x plus 11 over 2 then right side will be 12x minus 70 then now okay because i have over two both sides so i times two now so I, when i times two the over two will be cancelled off with the two then i will have five times minus three x plus eleven right hand side you need to times two so i'll get two times twelve x minus seventy which means here i will get negative fifteen x plus fifty five for the left side right side will be 24x minus 140 so now for the x right this minus 15x move to one side minus 140 move to the other side so i will be getting 24x plus 15x equals to 55 plus 140 so from here 39 left side is 39 right so 39x it will be 195 so now i divide by 39 195 over 39 that is going to be 5 okay once you found the x we need to find the y 
from the second equation. So from second equation, my y is negative 3 over 2 times 5 plus 11 over 2. That means this is going to be negative 15 over 2 plus 11 over 2. That is 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So I know that, okay, sorry, minus 15 over 2 plus 11 over 2 is minus 4 over 2. So there is a minus. That means the center is at 5 and minus 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is different from the points of AB, right? So that means now to get the equation of the circle, since we have found the center, so now you need to find the radius. So you just use any two points to get the radius. So I will use the center, let's say center C. So C is 5, negative 2. Okay, so you can find CB as radius or CA up to you. So probably I use uh, B. 5, 11. So to find the radius, that is CB, the length. So the length formula is, now this is the length formula. Let's say here A, this is B. So the formula is square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. This is the formula. Which means now I will be getting 5 minus 5 squared plus minus 2 minus 11 squared. Okay, that is square root of, the first one is 0, the second is uh, 13 basically. Right, square root of square, uh, square root of negative 13 squared, which is 13. So it means that the equation of the circle. Now, for your information, let's say the circle with center AB. Radius R. So the equation is going to be x minus A squared plus y minus B squared equals to R squared. Then from here, you will be getting x minus minus x minus 5 squared plus y minus minus 2 squared equals to 13 squared okay then i will get x minus 5 squared plus y minus minus is a plus then 13 squared is basically 169 so that is the requested equation of the circle Okay, question number 11. The diagram shows parts of the graph. Okay, this is the graph. And the line OA, where the A is a maximum point. The x-coordinate of A is lowercase letter a. And the curve has a minimum point at B0. Where A and B are positive constants, show B equals to 3A. Okay, so when you look at here, B is the minimum point, right? The minimum point with x coordinate of b. So whenever you see minimum points means that you need to find stationary points first. dy dx goes to 0. So first step, differentiate. So now my dy over dx, differentiate x cubed, 3x squared, keep the negative 2b, differentiate x squared, 2x, differentiate b squared x, that is plus b squared. And now when I simplify, I will get 3x squared minus 4bx plus b squared. That is my dy dx. So now, when the x equals to 0, dy dx equals to, uh, sorry, when x equals to b, okay, when x equals to b, dy dx equals to 0. So now, dy dx equals to 0, that means the x equals to b and also a. Okay, because A is a maximum point. Maximum points means also stationary point. This is also dy dx equals to 0. So now I get 2x. 
So now you need to show that b equals to 3a. Substitute these two values into your dy dx. Right. So now I will get dy dx is 0. Then equals to 3a squared. So when x equals to a. Right. Probably I like that. I write like this. dy dx, a x equals to a, x equals to a, dy dx equals to 0. That means now 0 is 3a squared when you substitute back into this equation, minus 4ba plus b squared. Then here, 0 equals to, when you simply factorize this, look at here. 3x, 3a squared is basically 3a times a. Okay, b squared is basically b times b. Now, look at the sign here. This is minus. This is plus. Minus times minus is a plus. That means the b should be both minus. Okay, because of here, both minus. So, when I times 3a times minus b, it will be negative 3ab. Then, a multiplied with minus b, that is minus b, minus ab. Okay, then followed by first column you multiply. Second column, you plus. Third column, you multiply. So, I will be getting 3a times a, 3a squared. Last column, minus b times minus b, plus b squared. Second column, minus 3ab, minus 1ab, is minus 4ab. So, these three terms are exactly the same as the equations, the terms in the equation. Right? So now I will be getting my factors by using cross multiplication. So this is the manual factorization. That means I will be getting 3a minus b times a minus b. So multiplication of both terms equals to 0 means that one of them must be 0. So it means that either 3a minus b equals to 0 or a minus b equals to 0. Then from here, I will get... My 3a minus b equals to 0 means that my b equals to 0. Oh, sorry, my b equals to 3a. So b equals to 3a or my a equals to b. But then a equals to b is not possible because obviously there are two different points. Okay, so a cannot be equal to b. Therefore, the b must equal to 3a. So that is how we prove the equation. B, show that the area of the shaded region between the line and the curve is Ka degree 4, where K is a fraction to be found. So now, okay, this is what you need to find now. So for the area, you basically you integrate from 0 to A for the graph, and then you minus the area of this triangle. Okay, so now here, I will find the area for the graph Below the graph means that from the graph until x axis first. So all this region, then only I minus the triangle later on. So now my area, or probably I will just write uh, integration. So from 0 to a, and then my graph, which is this. x cubed minus 2b x squared plus b squared a, b squared x. So here is going to be x cubed minus 2b x squared plus b squared x dx. Then, now, for the integration, always plus 1 degree. That means this is going to be x degree 4 over 4. Then, minus 2b x cubed over 3, plus b squared x squared over 2. And the limits from 0 to a. Then, now, just replace the a, the x by a first. So, I'll get a degree 4 over 4, minus 2b a cubed over 3 plus b squared a squared over 2 and minus when the x is replaced by 0. So because of all the x here, it will be 0. So here minus 0. Right? I'm getting... Okay, so here I need to simplify. Now, the question asking for ka degree 4 means that now I cannot remain the b. So the b must be replaced by 3a that we have found just now. Okay, so here I will just write, okay, uh, when 
B equals to 3A. Okay, then now I will just replace it by, will replace the B by 3A. So that is going to be A degree 4 over 4 minus 2 of 3A, A degree 3 over 3 plus 3A degree square, degree 2, A squared over 2. Then this is going to be A degree 4 over 4. Okay, then the 3 can cancel off. Alright, I will get a 2a degree 4. Then the other term, that will be 9a degree 4 over 2. So now when you calculate the first term, 1 over 4, a degree 4, minus 2a degree 4 plus 9 over 2a degree 4, that is 11 over 4, a degree 4. Okay, this value is the total area from the graph until the axis. Okay, that means now, when you look at the graph over here, that means it's, okay, I'm, find, I'm finding all these regions. So now to get the shaded region, I need to minus the area of this triangle. I know that for this triangle, my x value is a, but then what is my y? Okay, so now you need to find out this y from this graph. Okay, and when the x is replaced by a. So I will have to calculate the points first. So y equals to x cubed minus 2bx squared plus b squared x. So when x equals to a, my y is a cubed minus 2b a squared plus b square a and at the same time my b is also replaced by 3a okay my b is 3a then my y is a cubed minus 2 of 3a then another a squared plus 3a squared times a so that means this is a cubed minus 6a cubed then this is 9a cubed. So end up with 10 minus 6, so 4a cubed. Right. So now I know that the height is 4a cubed. This is 4a cubed. So the area of the triangle is half of base times height. So area of triangle. Okay, it will be half OAA, I will write OAA, otherwise you will confuse which triangle OAA equals to half A times 4A cubed. That is going to be 2A degree 4. Okay, so now area of the shaded region. That is going to be 11 over 4, a degree 4, minus a 2a degree 4. Okay, so 11 over 4, a degree 4, minus 2a degree 4. So this is going to be 3 over 4, a degree 4. So that is the area of the shaded region. Okay, I have completed the whole paper and also comes to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. So if you enjoy watching my video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and also share this channel with your friends. Okay, and again, if you would like to show your support to this channel, you may just click the thanks button below the videos. Alright, so Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye.